Hello and welcome to my channel Making Crafts. Today I am playing with the Stamperia molds again and this time I am playing with the fairy tale mold, the one that has the little fairy on it and some flowers. And so in a previous video, I should be uploaded by now, I was playing with one of the molds and using the modeling paste. And that's what your modeling paste or cream paste you're supposed to use in these molds. But today I wanted to try using the soft clay by Stamperia. So this is a, it says it's soft clay, white, extra light, and it's supposed to air dry within 24 hours. So I've gone ahead and put my clay in a Ziploc bag to keep it where it is away from the air. So I'm just going to zip it up. Let me get the air out of that bag. Zip it up while we're working with this. Since I'm under these lights and I don't I have the heat on, I don't know how fast it will dry. I've never tried it, so I don't want to have my clay dry out while we're working with it. So I'm just going to take a this whole big lump and just sort of smush it together and then I'm just going to press it in this mold. And I thought it'd be fun just I like just trying different things and trying different mediums out that I hadn't tried before. I've used air dry clay of different brands and I've also used different brand molds that were thicker but this is a thinner mold so I don't know if it's going to work or not. But we shall see. Oops, there's her little hand. I didn't get that in there. Okay. Let's see how this looks. And all of these products, the clay and the mold, both came from the rubberbuggy.com. And this is part of my rubber buggy design team project. So these products were sent to me by the rubber buggy. But I am allowed to choose the products. So I chose these because I love Stamperia products, and so I wanted to try some of their more mixed media style products. I love their papers, so I thought I would like to try their mixed media type, their molds and different things. So I decided to give this a try this month. And they have lots of different molds. I don't know if I should leave it in here to dry though. I don't normally leave things in molds dry. I think it would just stick to the mold. I don't know. With the modelin paste, you do leave it in there to dry. Just working it. Just takes a few minutes and then let's just scrape it down. Once again, just cleaning it up some. And I'm trying to get it even when I scrape it like this so the back is fairly even because I want to use this on a junk journal cover because I want to make a fairy journal. Okay, so what I'm going to do now is I'm just going to leave this to dry for a little while and then I'm just looking to see if there's any cracks or if anything looks like there's a gap or a hole. I'm going to leave this to dry for just a few minutes and then I will see if it hardens any and once it starts to harden then I will try to release it. It has been about 30 minutes or so since I set this aside to dry. Maybe closer to an hour. I've kind of lost a little track of time but it's not been that long. But the back side is starting to feel drier than it was. It, it's it's starting to feel like it's drying out. So I think I'm going to go ahead and try to release it from the mold now and then let it air dry the rest of the way. So hopefully we do not destroy the little fairy, but I'm just going to see if that's best since it is drying some. The problem I was having before was her little hand. Maybe I should have started there trying to release it. Let's just see if we can gently work with her little hands. It's so tiny and not crack the Take my fingernail and push where her little hand is and see how that does. That is a lot better. So we did get a little hand. Um, in the thing, in the image, it doesn't really look like you can see the fingers anyway because it doesn't look like fingers. But she looks beautiful. Um, I don't know if there's a way I can zoom in. Let me see if I can gently, because you got to remember she's still wet so I really shouldn't be moving around much. But let me see if I can get, you, get it up there so you can see it. So look how good she looks. She's already feeling firmer, but I'm not going to press on her because I know that she's not totally dry. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to just set her over on my table and let her dry. And I'm going to go ahead and get these leaves out as well. Let me set her aside and then, let me see if I can, I want you to see really good before I set her aside to dry. So I'm just going to go lay her over here beside me on the table to dry and then we'll get these leaves out. Came out super, super easy. And so this one, like I said, this mold is very flexible. That one, I think I may have broke some of the leaf off. That's okay. We can still use it because you're going to be, you could tuck it under something. And I'm going to set that out to dry. I, 
honestly think for the leaves and flowers, I would go ahead and release them before letting it dry any. But then for the larger piece here, maybe not. We'll see how it all turns out. So to paint these, I'm going to be using, for some of the parts, I'm going to be using the Indigo Blue Luscious Pigment Powders. And this is the teal. I'm also going to be using the Ballet Slipper and the Mermaid's Tail. So I'm just gonna lay these aside for now and I'm going to start working with the fairy first. Her wings and her clothing, I want to be more of um, these colors, like the teal and the mermaid's tail. So let's just, I'm just gonna put a little bit out of each one. Just to get me started. And then I can always add more. And I love the, the shine in these. I love these powders. And I used these when I was working on the previous, previous altered book cover. In that video, I will link it. I don't know if it will be up when this video is available or not. We will see. Oops. I'm just adding a little water. It is mixing them up together a little bit, but that's okay. So I'm just gonna add a little water and I'm just using a little plastic mat here. So I just want to go in and just add, and I'm not using any, um, I didn't use any gesso or anything on this because I felt like this clay felt good enough for painting that it didn't need the gesso. That it would, I knew that it would take the paint pretty well. Gonna go along the edge here. I'm just going to highlight all those ridges and edges and then I'll come back with more paint as I need it. So then I wanna come in with a little bit of this green and just kind of lightly put it on the, I don't know if this is, looks like a little, like she might be a fairy flower, a flower fairy, and so this might be part of her flower there. Go back with the blue here, I missed her top wing here. There we go. And it's probably going to take several layers to get her looking the way I want her to look. And I want this screen to just blend back into the blue. And I think these two look really good together, these two colors. They're very similar. You can just, that's the thing about this, you can just keep adding more with these powders and it'll just darken as you go. So now that I have the mermaid's tail on there, and I love the shine. It's like a, it's not really glitter in it, I guess, but it's it does have like a shine to it. So now I'm just gonna come back with some more of the, maybe a little drier on my brush there, because I just wanna highlight the, with the, the um, teal, I'm just trying to highlight the edges and leave the mermaid's tail inside the creases of the wings, if that makes sense. Okay, I'm liking how that's looking. So then I'm just gonna highlight the bottom here with some of the teal. And I have mixed the teal to be a little darker so that it's darker than the mermaid's tail this time. Because I decided I wanted to go over the edges and kind of darken everything with the teal instead of the mermaid's. So I do love how that's looking. So I want to go and do my edges with this. I do believe I'm gonna just go quickly over the edges and just hitting the bumps with the teal and then I'm going back inside the edges with the mermaid's tail. So there's a lighter color inside the edges and the top of the edges is the darker color. And that's the thing with the pigment powders. You can use more or more or less powder just depending on how dark you want each one. And so you can control the color with the powder and the amount of water that you're using. So I don't know if you can see her, the different colors where she goes light to dark. And that was my whole goal is just to kind of go from light to dark. Okay, so let's get some, I'm gonna decide which one of these I want to use for her skin color. I think and just do a little test. I'm gonna test this on a piece of paper first to make sure it's not too peachy. 
Let me pull out a different brush. And I am using very tiny brushes today, but nothing. These are just a mixture of brushes that I have, and I just am using kind of like that. Let's just try a little bit on her hand and see how that looks. It's a little dark. May need to mix it with some of this. So that one was um, Sunkissed Peach, and then this one is Beach Comer Beige. It's more of a just mix the two together a little bit. Oops. I do like that color a little better. Mixed me up quite a bit here, so I'll have enough to paint her in. It's not a much, I don't need much, but I need a little bit to get her painted in. And if we don't like it, we can always go back over the color, because acrylics, you can, you can go back over those and change it. But that's looking so good. She's just coming to life. So I'm just going to take a little bit of brown acrylic, and I'm going to mix it. And this one, let's see, it's a really dark one. It's the Burnt Umber. But I'm going to mix it with, get my brush here. I'm going to mix it with some of that, um, what was it called? Beach Comer Beige. And just get a light brown color for her hair. And I may even go back with um, a little bit lighter over it. But I want to try just some brown hair. So now that I have her brown hair, I'm just gonna come back just with a almost dry brush and just see if I can put some highlights in her hair. So here we have our little fairy. So I've gone through and I've just, I just put a little bit of blue highlights in her hair just to add that sparkle. And I don't know if you can see on camera how, I love how the colors have turned out. So I'm just gonna add a little bit of mahogany this is Mahogany Antique and Wax by, I thought it was Prima. It says Art Alchemy. And I think it is Prima. I will have to link to that. This is, I also got this from the Rubber Buggy. But I'm just going to, let me find a little bitty brush. I just want to put a little bit on my brush. Because normally I use my finger, but I just want a little bit this time. So I, my finger's too fat for this. And I just want to go in, just lightly go in and highlight the edges around her wings. So I'm just going to do it lightly. Just mix a little bit of my mat here so I don't have gobs of it going on there. Just still using my dry brush going through, kind of just highlighting the edges with the wax. That kind of just adds some shadows so you can see all her features. I still like to blend it with my fingers some. That may have been still a little too wet for that. So let's go back and add some color back. So that took some of our color off there, rubbed too hard. So we'll just add some color back there. Just gonna add some more of the blue back since when I rubbed it, I rubbed too hard when I was rubbing the wax. So we gotta get that back on there, our turquoise. And I am just gonna go back so everything blends. I'm just gonna do it all through the edges. So I'm just working more color on top of the wax so that you still have the aging of the wax underneath the how where it adds the sh darker shadows but then i'm coming back with the teal and then the mermaid's tail and i'm just going back over it so i'm really wanting to make it the dark teal around the outer edge as you can see and then i'm going in with the lighter on the inside here so that it just sort of highlights it's lighter as you get closer to her and then on the outer it's the darker and i just like the look of that and that's why I really don't have a reasoning behind doing it. It's just something, I, the look I like. And then you can see the mahogany underneath. So let me hold that up for you and see if you can see. 
see what I'm talking about, the different colors. Let me see if I can turn my light up a little bit for you too. So that maybe you can see the coloring. I've got the, um, clean my fingers off. I've got the wax all over my fingers. It's right here. Better clean that up before I get that all over her. So this stuff can get very messy. So I probably should put the lid on. I love the smell of it though. <laughs> but it has a perfumey smell to it. So let's see. There we go. I'm trying to get it in the light so you can see it. So that's the lighter and darker. And then there's a there's a kind of sheen to this um, pigment powders. And so I'm just going to leave the back plain because I am going to glue her down. I'm just wanting you to see the edges. I have gone through and done the edges. And you can see I've got a lot of mahogany here on the edges. So there, we're just going to lay her aside and let her dry. And you can start seeing the little blue highlights where I've put in her hair. Just add a few more. Just little blue highlights to her hair. Because this, this powder has such a shine to it. I like adding a little glitter to her hair. Because fairies would have blue hair. I'm pretty sure. So for the flowers, I'm going to be using the same colors, especially the green. And then I'm going to also add in the pink. Let me see what, I can't remember the name of it. Let me look. It is Ballet Slipper. So let me put a little bit right here. So I want to paint my flowers. Oops, this isn't the right flower. I want to paint my flowers pink. And then, you, you know, the green will go on the leaves. You definitely want to put some protectant down because as you spray, if you do like I'm doing, you're spraying it, it's going to go it does, you know, spread out some. I'm okay because I'm using these plastic mats and it can wash, and I'll wash it up, but you don't want to do with this on anything that you, because I think the pigment powders can stain as well, so you want to be careful with it. And let's just, I'm just going to go through it and add a layer of pink first, and then I'll, I'm starting out light as you can tell. I added a lot of water because I want, I don't want to go too bright pink. I want it to be something light. But it's always easier to add more than to take away when you're painting. It's harder to take it away. You have to, I can always just sew it though over it and start over if I don't like the color. But I wish you could see that sheen. It has just got such a shine to it. I love that. Okay, so I'm going to go over here and mix into my green a little bit. I want it to be fairly dark, but not too dark. Let's see here. Start on the edge there. I do want it to be more green than teal or in the blue family, so I'm just trying to make it darker so that it is. So once I had the pieces painted, I did go back over them with heavy gel medium. Um, and I used the gloss and the reason I did that is I wanted some shine to it And when you use the pigment powders, there is no shine So I did want it to shine a little bit I don't know if you can see that on camera and I will have to tell you when you do something like that and you use your um, Anything over top of those pigment powders you got to be careful because it does You can wipe them off and it will smear so I had to be careful with that and I did get some white spots here But I actually like those so I didn't go back But if you don't like them, you can go back and add more color to it and I sealed the front and the back. And one of my main reasons for using the heavy um, gel medium was I wanted to add some strength to this. I felt like it was very fragile. And so I think it feels a little harder now that I added that. And so um, I did just seal the fairy. I didn't feel like the flowers, where they were smaller, I didn't really worry about those. So I'm going to, I kind of changed what I was going to do. I am going to still use this on the a journal cover. But originally, I thought that I would back it with some car stock, some, not car stock, excuse me, some cardboard from a box. But then I remembered that I still have some of this paper from um, the Lemoncraft paper pack, the 6x6 six six paper pack. And I, this is called Lemoncraft Yesterday. And I got this from the Rubber Ruggie as well. And you've seen me, if you've seen any of my videos recently, you've seen me use this paper pack and you're probably getting tired of it. But I absolutely love this paper. And so I also decided to do some of the fussy cuts from their fussy cut pack. And so I will link to both of those packs below. So I'm gonna add some of the fussy cuts. And then I have a doily here that's just from Walmart from the section where you would um, like cake decorating and wedding stuff, That's that's and like party kind of stuff. That's where I find these. And then I just have some 
lace trim that was um, that I got from another YouTuber. And it's DC Scrap and Rooster. I had to take a second. I couldn't remember her name. It's DC Scrap and Rooster on YouTube. She sells on her YouTube, but she also has an Etsy shop. So you may want to check that out as well. Okay, so I have bits and pieces here ready to go. So I'm going to trim this down, though. I don't want it to be square. Typically, when I put something on the cover of my journals, it's more rectangular because my journal covers, you know, they're normally like six by... Um, Six by nine, let's see, six by nine. Yeah, I was trying to remember. Here's the journal cover lane here. Let's just see what this one is. Yeah, this one's a little bit larger. So, I see how I have the centerpiece on my journal here? That's what I'm making is a centerpiece to go here. So, I'll probably cut it down to about, uh, let's see. Let me see how big my little fairy is. If I do it like that, that's about, I'm going to cut it down to four and a half by Six, I think let's see I kind of like that size and I can always trim it down a little bit more when I lay everything out and sometimes I go four by six but I think that's a little small for this one actually I'm gonna go four and a quarter four and a quarter because it's okay for my fairy to hang off some I don't she doesn't have to be on there oops I got something underneath there it wasn't cutting well it's probably time to change the blade so I'm not going to trash this little piece, though, because I can use that again later on something else. So now for this piece, I think I want to go ahead and just punch the corners to add a little decoration to the corners. So I got the corners punched, but they, um, they were really hard to punch because this is a very old punch that I have. I bought it used. It was a box full of other punches. And so I didn't, I wasn't able to um, show you as I punched it because I had to block the camera because I had to get my whole body in there and press on it. So now let's start decorating it up. So I have this little dolly here. And I'm thinking about, about that much on the piece. So let's go ahead and glue that down. So I'm going to be using the craft glue from Stamperia. And this one also comes from the rubber buggy. And since it's my design team for them, most of the products do come from there. But if you see something that I forget to list below and don't, not link to, just ask me in the comments below and I can let you know if you're interested in something where it came from. So I just want to add glue to my doily. And so this glue you just, you can paint on. They also come in, this also comes in a bottle that you can squeeze out. But I wanted the um, paint on kind because I'm planning on using it in some collages. And I think that it will be better that way. Let me see if I can hold this up so I don't get it all over. I know what I'm going to do. I'm going to pull out. I have a book that I use for my glue book. It's just a book that I've cut out because I used the cover. It actually may be the cover we used last week. I can't remember now. But um, this one I just used the cover to create a journal. So when I do that, I can save, I try to save some of the books like this that I cut out to be my glue pages so that I can just use them like this to add glue and then I can just trash the page. Okay, so let's just lay this on here and I want to line it up kind of like that. And then we're going to press it down. And I've got some glue coming through. Use this to press it. Because you have to remember, these doilies are really thin. They're just you, really for using at parties and things. Okay. And then I'm just going to fold this back. And I will glue that down as well. Let me just add a little glue to the back here. Because the whole piece will be glued down, so I don't really have to glue the whole doily down back here, just enough to keep, keep it from flapping up. Okay. Okay, so I've got that glued down and I've inked the edges. So now I'm just trying to decide where my pieces are going before I start gluing anything down. So I want the clock, I think, right in here. And then I have some flowers from the Fussy Cut Kit. Maybe more like that. 
and then more here and I have this little greenery all this is from the yesterday fussy cut pack and let's see here just trying to lay it all out to kind of get an idea of what I want and where I want it all and I have some butterflies in different pieces this is going to go down here in the corner but I don't want to cover up where I the whole corner there and then she's going to be holding this flower so and then the butterflies will go up there so I like that um, maybe tilt her I may go ahead and tilt her just a little bit more I don't know maybe like that so let's just go ahead and glue these pieces down first and for the smaller pieces I am going to use my glue bottle and then I may go back to this craft glue for her okay so I'm just going to do this one first since I know it goes underneath. I'm just gonna add that right there. Then I just want to add these little pieces in. So I do want my clock underneath, so mm, let me Go ahead and add that just trying to figure out what I want layered on top of what and just adding those layers and I think I better better make sure I got the clock set up right here's here's the right way and I forgot and glued that down I want this like this and then we'll have it here there we go and they don't have to be perfect spots I just have a vision in my head and so I'm trying to but if I move the pieces much, I totally forget where each one goes. So I'm just trying to lay them out. Make sure I get everything layered up like I wanted it. Because once this, this glue dries really fast, and so it's not much time to move it. Okay. And now we can add our fairy. I think I'll just do her kind of sideways like that. Make sure I didn't pull this over too far. Okay, so let's glue her down with some of this craft glue because it's very thick glue and I think it'll hold her really well. Okay. So we'll get a fresh page so we don't get any glue on the front of her. And I'm just going to add a bunch of glue to the back of her. And I think this glue will actually help hold her together too. I was really worried about her at first because she was so fragile feeling. But um, since I added the heavy gel medium, I'm not as I'm not as worried about her. So I didn't paint the back because, as you can tell, I'm just going to glue it down. So I did put, like I said, put the heavy gel medium on the back because I was just trying to give her more strength. Okay, just kind of eyeball where I want her before I set her down here. I do want her hanging over some of the edges, but at the same time, I want her as much as I can get of her onto the card so I can glue her down. So I'm just going to hold that for a second. Just turn it over and press. But you want to press gently just in case she does because she is very thin. She may not be as fragile as I feel like she is. It's just where she has such thin pieces, I do worry. Okay, let's just get her on there. She feels like she's sticking pretty good. I'm gonna hold those wings down for just a second. And so when you put her on the cover, you don't have to worry about the wings sticking over because once you put her on the cover, you can glue those down to the cover as well or whatever's gonna be underneath the cover. So now I'm just gonna add my little um, find my brush here. Add my little flower here. And I decided not to use all the flowers that I p colored up or painted up because um, I didn't need them. I felt like just adding a few would be good since I wanted to add some of these paper flowers as well. Okay. So now I'm just going to add this one here. And they are curled up a bit so I'm just having to hold them down for a minute so that they can flatten out as they glue. And you know what? I'm going to pull him back up really fast. He didn't have, he wasn't stuck yet because I forgot to add the lace. So let's add the lace first. 
The lace really needs to go down with some fabric tack because it's good with the um, fabric glue. And so I just want to add a little on the side here, just like this, just to add some flowers in. And this little lace is just all little flowers. So I'm just going to run a bead of fabric tack down this side here. And I have those holes I punched. I'm just putting some glue there, but I bet you it went through to my mat. Okay, what's the right side? I have a hard time telling on some of this. Both sides are so pretty, so I guess it doesn't matter. But this one looks like the front side to me. So I'm just going to add it right there. I'm glad I thought of that before I totally glued down this little flower here. Okay. Just trim that off there. There we go. Now we'll add a little bit more glue to this because I'm sure the glue was starting to dry. So I'm going to add just a little bit more glue. And then stick him back on and hold him flat. See, what I was saying before is the back is a little lumped up and it could be where I left so much before it dried. You know, I, I had it the glue when I put it, I meant the glue, but the clay when I put it in the mold, it was molded up. But that's okay because I can just press it down and hold it. And it, it's very, it's kind of flexible. Let's, it's going there. Let's just hold it there for a minute. I got it straight before I hold it down. So then the flower, the stem broke, but that was okay because I was going to cut the stem anyway because I want to attach it like it's in her hand and then have the stem coming down the, um, over the, out of her hand there, down the bottom of her hand. Couldn't think about what I was wanting to say. So I think that's holding there. So this one's going to be a little delicate to put glue on, but we're going to try. So I'm going to add some the flower here will be fine. It's just the little bitty stem is going to be a little difficult, but I think I can get it without getting all my glue fingers. Okay. So now we're just going to take and I'm just going to turn that so that it's flat against her hand. I need to slide it just a little there. It can look like it's leaning over. The flower's leaning over. Okay, so just hold that for a minute there to make sure it stays. And then we'll just go in and add some little bit of glue to this stem. And then I'm going to make sure it's right side up. I'm trying to figure out which one's the right side. This one is. Okay, let's do that again. Getting quite a bit of glue on my fingers now. Hard to hold on to all this. It's just wanting to stick to me. This one is a little bitty piece, so it's going to be. But I want to make sure that I've got it so that it looks like it's attached to the other stem. And that it's coming, you know, blowing through her hands. There we go. That looks pretty good. So I'm going to put this glue up because I've got lots of little bitty pieces now. And so I'm just going to use this little bottle of glue for that. And let's see, I want the larger butterfly, I think, right in here. And I thought these butterflies went perfectly with the paint that I finally used for her. And let's see, maybe one here. And I was thinking threes because I like to do things in threes. Maybe one, maybe one like, not really sure yet. I kind of like that. I kind of like how the, the butterflies flow that way. And I'm not going to glue their wings totally down. I'll kind of just add the glue to the middle of them because I want the wings to stick up a little. Okay, that one, we're going to turn it that way. This one's going to be more flying. Let's see, that way, because I'm trying to make like a circle going around. And I may have to add fabric tack to him. I've got him touching some of the paper, but if it's not enough, I'll add fabric tack underneath that wing in order to attach him because he's he is touching the fabric there. And let's add this one right here. There we go. And there we have it. It's a little busy, but I do love it. Oh, I forgot. I wanted to add this. Just this little bead that I have somewhere in here, I think. 
I'm not sure, it may be a bit too much, but I did want to add just a little bit more dimension. I'm trying to decide now that if I need it or not. I think I will add it right there. So I'm going to use Fabri-Tac for that because it's like a plastic, so I think it should do good with the plastic. If it doesn't, I may have to come back with some hot glue. But we will see. Fabri-Tac holds a lot as well. So I think right there and there with the other roses. So there is our finished topper for our journal cover, and I really love how it turned out. I love the little... Um, fairy on there and the pieces that went with her and I think that this yesterday paper pack went really well with her as well and I've used it in a lot of projects just to be a little six by six paper pack and a six by twelve paper pack it has really went a long way I've got a lot of glue bits on me but it has really went a long way and so I hope that you have enjoyed this video on how I created this little topper and thank you so much for watching and I hope you have a wonderful day bye